Tigers manager, good friend of ours, joining us right now on foul territory, making his FT debut. Good luck to you, AJ. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the other AJ and Kratty are on fire already today. Great to talk to you. And have you been watching WBC? I have. And I brought my friend Ty Cobb with me today. So you can you can <laughs> check him out behind me. But I, um, yeah, we've been watching. All, it's on the clubhouse all the time. Like, we, we have a couple of our guys, Jonathan Scopes, heading back from Curacao. Uh, they were in Taiwan. We've got Miggy. Uh, Eduardo Rodriguez tonight. Javi Baez is being the magician that he is. So we're watching as much as we can. I'm watching at night. So I've seen some at Team USA. So it, it's kind of captured the whole sport. And and as all of us that have been in, the, in camps know, you kind of need it this time of camp. Like everybody's gearing towards opening day, but the middle part of spring is is kind of brutal sometimes. So what, you can make it up till 10 p.m. when they kick off? Because I'm, I I'm can having start. a hard time. Yeah, no, I can see the start of the game, and I usually wake up to the result. So I can I can usually make the first pitch. That 7 o'clock game I love. Um, I watched the end of the Columbia game yesterday. Um, and then, and then obviously, when Team USA starts, I saw Lance Lynn throw maybe 10 pitches, which, by the way, for him could be three innings. So. <laughs> very true, very true. How's camp going? How's uh, the team looking going into this season? Anybody standing out that we should be uh, paying yeah. extra attention to? Well, we're healthy um, so far, knock on wood. I mean, it's to me that the – the toughest part of the spring is is the the unexpected injuries or or things that can happen. But um, we're doing pretty well. I mean, we've had the emerging some young players. The WBC kind of clears out some of the veteran players, and our and our younger guys are getting into camp more. We just sent out Parker Meadows, but he leads our team in homers. It's Austin's little brother, and I say little meaning younger. He's actually taller and bigger than Austin, <laughs> but um, that was cool to have both Meadows brothers back in camp. Um, we've, we've thrown the ball. Okay. Eduardo Rodriguez before he left was doing great. Spencer Turnbull coming back is huge for us. Um, he had a no hitter the last time, you know, he was active a couple of years ago. So, um, we'll see how the, how the competitions come out. We've got some young talent, Riley Green, Spencer Torkelson, guys that are going to carry this franchise moving forward that, that are having good camps. So, you know, I, I, I try that. to temper a little bit of the, the stats that come with spring training. You know how those can go, but um, it is nice that these guys feel like big leaguers after getting their feet wet last year. I love that you're talking about like those those young guys we talked about two years ago. Is that when you got the job? Yeah. Two years ago. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to know where you think this org is going in the next three years. Like, what is your you've seen you've seen the Astros grow, right. and then up to winning the World Series. Now you're here, and you know where do you see it? I know you talked about pitching. You talked about a lot of hitters today. In three years, what does it look like for the Detroit Tigers? Well, in manager years, three years is a long time, so you better hurry up if you want me to still be talking about it in three years. But I, I, I think the um, – I didn't come here to just sort of fill out the lineup card and watch these guys grow. I mean, you come here to win. Like our division – um, right now runs through Cleveland. I mean, they've been the most impressive team last year, high contact team. Their Tito does an incredible job of maximizing that roster. They can always pitch. Um, so we got to set the bar at how do you win your division? You know, how do you get, um, and the, the schedules change, but you used, you used to have to play them 19 times, but now you got to win this division and get yourself a shot at, in the dance. And I don't want to concede anything so we have some young guys but we also have some veteran guys that we want to have bounce back seasons and then you come to win and you win enough games you win some series you win some weeks you make yourself interesting put a ton of pressure on the front office to go out and get somebody at the deadline and then all of a sudden that's how 2015 happened when I was in Houston we weren't predicted at the beginning of that season to go be good so um, our job is to is to is to make us better team better players stay healthy um, we're going to get Tarek Skubal back sometime this season. Casey Mize is rehabbing. Our strength of our pitching is going to get better. Um, I like Lorenzen and Boyd. I mean, I, so I, I've always been the manager, and Cressy, you played for me. Like, why concede today? Like, what what is the problem with with us going out and surprising some people? And that's the mindset we're taking. And who needs to, who needs to be the guy to step up then? Who's who is the guy that you're saying, hey, you know what? I can say this about him because. I'm the manager, and you you were right. always up front. I remember one time I'm, I'm going to interrupt the question I asked to tell a story about um, Marisnik 
Yeah. Mariznick was batting, I think, like fifth in the lineup one day, and he walked in, and you looked at him, and you go, I don't like what I see. You're hitting ninth now. And you took the lineup <laughs> down. Yeah. You took the lineup down. And Mariznick is like, if you guys have ever, like, Riznik's full of energy and like yeah. his hair is his life. Like he's out there catching passes. And it was like just took a just just a pin to the balloon and deflated the man. Like <laughs> he didn't like the energy and he go, you know, but he called him out. The, the, the reason the yeah. story was he called him out. Yeah. Who's the guy? Who's the well, guy you that you need to step up? You know, you say deflated, and I just said motivate. Like I hear motivate, I motivated him to to go be good. I, I think you just got to be real with players and I don't mind putting pressure on players. I, I think, and we all came up in a different era where like you needed to perform or you got sent to the minor leagues. And that, that is still true. But it, but I think with players, you can't be afraid of the pressure or the moment you got to put as much on them as you can. So I'm unapologetic that we need our young players to be good. We need Spencer Torkelson and Riley green to be every bit what people think they can be. And our job is to, protect them while they're learning that way, that, that craft in that way. And then putting them in the middle of the lineup and letting them know, I trust them. I believe in them and I want them to be good. Um, secondly, we need our veteran players to accept younger players in our clubhouse. We have a kid, Kerry Carpenter who came up last year after hitting 30 homers, does it a little bit differently. Um, has a little bit of a funky stance, has a little bit of an uphill move to the ball. Uh, but it's worked for him. And so we're not going to try to reinvent the wheel. We're going to get him to get the ball in the air and get it to the pull side and get it out of the ballpark. Um, Akil Badu, rule five pick two years ago. Um, it's speed, it's defense. It's like be yourself and then we will work around you. And my job is to put you in a position to be successful. So um, our young players are going to carry this team. Obviously, Javi and Scope and, and – Austin Meadows, guys that have that have been there, they kind of their track record speaks for itself. We need them to be good, but this organization is starting to turn the corner because we are are talented as our young players are getting to the big leagues at the same time. And the trades that we made this offseason, Scott Harris, my new boss, made some trades to um, you know that that took a took a little bit of our bullpen out of play. But now Matt Veerling coming off a World Series team and Nick Mason coming off a World Series team. Those guys expect to to be good. And so um, I'm trying to figure out exactly what style of play we're going to have. We're going to play to win. I know that. Uh, and I'm going to put – I'm going to be unapologetic of putting guys in a position that I think helps us win um, that game today. And that's going to come with some guys sitting that may not like it or some guys that may have to get pinch hit for because we got guys on our team that are really good against one side or the other. But – they know I'm in the trenches with them. They know I'm going to be real with them, and that's that's the way I've always managed. So, so AJ, uh, I, I, the first question I have is why did Mariznick? What what did Mariznick do? <laughs> was he were you mad because I mean your hair is on point, but his hair is always on point. So I don't know if you got up and put some gel, Brian. Uh, Scott next to me here is a little jealous because your hair is better than his today. So I don't know if like yeah. Mariznick got mad because your hair was on point. But Maybe. what did Mariznick do? To get so what, to move from five to nine after the lineups posted, like that doesn't happen. <laughs> no, you know what? I bet I don't know that to be a hundred percent, but I probably set that up on purpose to 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 break some of the monotony of the season. I I can't imagine I put him fifth on purpose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably meant for him to be in the nine hole. So I was either setting up an easy dig on Marisa <laughs> or that Springer and some of the boys would get a good kick out of it. But um, I, I think for him, like. He, I, I just, I want to be in the in the clubhouse with the players. I want to, I want to be in on the inside jokes. I want them to give it back to me. There's always a time to be serious, but with Jake in particular, I was able to, to kind of set him up to be poked fun at, and then, uh, and then he would poke it right back at me. He, he actually, to this day, he's the only player that's ever hurt me, because I thought I could beat him on a first step in Oakland. Um, a few years ago, and I ended up pulling my groin. I was hurt for the rest of the year, so that hurt my <laughs> golf game, which is which is dreadful. Well, don't you don't you know that like you're we're old now, and we don't need to I be know. racing or trying anything. I mean, I know you know you so, get older when you manage. Both you guys that want to manage one these days, I hope you do. You guys, you're gonna get older like me too. You're gonna get this gray hair like I'm like I'm rocking. That's, that's why people ask me. I'm like, dude, have you seen these managers? They age like <laughs> they age it's like presidents. Much. They age like ten per each year. 
I always but, tell myself if I was a better hitter, I wouldn't have to manage. Then I could, <laughs> I could uh, do something different, but I couldn't hit a slider. So speaking of old, speaking of old guys and, 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 you know, veteran guys or gray haired guys, Miggy, Miggy's last yeah. year, he's already come out and said, like, what's his, is his role going to be DH mentor? You're just mentioned that you're going to have to put guys and yeah. pinch hit for guys and situation. Like, have you had that talk with him? What's his role? For the for the 2023 Tigers. Yeah, so let me give you a story. And and Cratchy's been in the in the clubhouse before. When I stand up in front, I try to entertain the guys. I want to make I want to make it light. There's always something in there that I'm trying to, like a point I'm trying to get across. But with Miggy, on the first day, I was like, man, I got to make sure this guy knows how much we respect him. How much it's his clubhouse. This is his 20th major league season. Um, you know, I got guys that are 21 years old in the clubhouse that are that are in their first big league camp. And Miggy was was rocking the Marlins gear back then and homering off Roger Clemens when these kids were born. So um, but the one thing that we can do to honor Miggy is play better. Like all he really wants is us to win. Like I, there'll be times where I've come in, you know, you want to hit him third. You want to hit him fourth. I slid him down to fifth and I'm like, hey, Miggy, let's have a talk about it. And he's like, why are you hitting me so high? We got these young dudes who are supposed to be carrying the lineup. Like, I'm old. Like, put me down a little bit. Uh, he is the ultimate team dude. And so I've had the talk with him, like, hey, day games after night games hard. Uh, obviously, I've, we've got other options if guys are going to be good. Uh, but the more Miguel Cabrera contributes, the more it's going to be normal workload for him. If he falls below that and all of a sudden physically he can't do it or he's not handling certain style pitchers, I'm going to treat him like every other player, which is all that he really asked for. Um, he wants to contribute to wins. You see the stuff he's doing in the WBC, and he's hitting bullets left and right, and, he, and he's energized. And that's because that team has a chance to win the WBC. And I think the more that we win, the better that he's going to be in his final year. We're going to honor the hell out of him. We're going to we're going to be tipping our caps to him. We've already had it, but he, he, he doesn't want to be the focus of attention. He wants to win. And so hopefully our guys can respond to that and, 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 and provide him a – a really good send off. Speaking of winning, and you mentioned your golf game had to take a hit when you pulled the groin. Take us through you and Tiger playing together <laughs> and you beating him. Go. Oh man, I don't know about beating him, but my the stories get better the further I get away from college. But like so Tiger and I were in college together. He was at Stanford and and we both got hurt at the same time. So he, you know, he hurt his knee, I hurt my shoulder. We're in the training room. Like, I know who he is. There's no way that I that I know who he is. So we start talking golf. And one thing that you know about all of us in baseball is we think we know a lot more about other sports than we really do, right? Like, we always get mad at, at people that talk about baseball as if they're experts. But we will certainly tell you what play should be run in football, how you should play this golf hole, who should be doing this, who should be doing that. So with Tiger, everything was a bet. So every time something would happen, he would want to take you to the driving range and he would want you know, or have putting contest or whatever. And there was one time in college where he took me to the to the, the practice facility late at night, maybe a few adult beverages. And we we're going to have a putting contest. And I made one and called the contest off because I was like, that way I beat Tiger Woods. This was before I mean, he was an amateur champion, but we kind of knew we didn't know he's going to be the greatest ever to play, but we knew he was going to be a big deal. And so we would go back and forth. We dated roommates for a while and got to hung out a little bit. When it, we've, we've reunited at Stanford a couple times. And then in 17, he's a big Dodger fan. And so I saw him in the, in the front row at Dodger Stadium. So um, some Tiger Woods stories, a few pictures I can't share uh, on social media and, and, and a lot of good banter. Wow. So, AJ, I think we've talked about this. And I, Scott and Eric do not know this story, but we've talked about this. So when I was – out of heights because we're similar age. You're a little bit older than I was. Old, but old. True, but he was at Stanford. AJ was at Stanford, and the coach Mark Marquis, who was at Stanford forever, who you played for, he calls me and says, "Hey, we want to recruit you to come to Stanford." I said, "Okay, cool." And he's like, "You know, set up the visit, the whole deal." Well, I call him like two days. Like you leave on a Friday for your visit, so it's like Tuesday, and I don't know who the assistant was at the time. He calls me and says, "Hey, you're still coming on Friday?" And I said, well, "Wait a minute." I'm like, you guys have this other catcher. His name's AJ also. Wasn't he like first team All-American, first team All-World? And they're like, yeah. And I go, why in the world would I go to Stanford and have to sit two years behind him? And then you ended up coming back for your senior year. So it would have been three years. I'm like, why would I come? And they're like, you know, we, we'll try you at DH and first. And I'm like, no, like, sorry, guys. But like, I'm 
eh, no Stanford for me. And obviously, you know, you went to Stanford and look at you, and then I didn't go to Stanford. <laughs> look at me. So, like, I mean, it's maybe I messed up. Tell me I was. Tell me I made the right decision here. Well, baseball wise, it would have been awesome to have you out there. Uh, but you would have, like, school wise, you would have hated it just like I did, and every other player that goes there and gets <laughs> grinded on. We had to take finals during the College World Series, which I thought was like was like a big big disadvantage. But we later reunited in the big leagues, and I'd take your big league career over my big league career. So who really won? Like I might have won the amateur days, but I think you might have won the yeah. But look the, at you, look at you finals. now. Yeah. Look at well, you now, I, yeah. Now, but, now, but again, like we we can debate this. Like I get to make the decisions, and you get to tell me when I'm wrong on TV. Like it's, <laughs> it's a, I'm not sure who's winning. Hey, I'm losing I, this deal. I'll say I'll say this: You don't make many wrong decisions. Uh, I, I appreciate that. No, there's that's one we're not gonna. We're, there's one we're not gonna get into, but there's there, you know, <laughs> but, you know, there's usually when we talk, we've had a lot of talks, you and I, and, and yeah. managers' meetings, and you, you always, and like Kratz said, you, the one thing I love about you is you're honest. You'll tell us things. There's so many stories he's told us that we can't tell on the air, and about like why, <laughs> but like no, I mean like why he makes decisions. And he's like, look, I can't have this get out, but this is why I'm not hitting Marisnik fifth, right? And it's right, like, right. we won't ever say that, but in our mind, at least it give us an idea of what to look for and what he's – and he's always – AJ's always been honest about and open, and I respect the hell out of him. No, I, I want those Tiger that. Woods pictures, though. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can text him, but I can't share him. I, I can share him personally, <laughs> but I can't necessarily share him on public platforms, as we know, go viral. Fair, fair. Yes, text off the record kind of stuff. Hey, I wanted to ask you a couple Tiger things quick here. First off, I, I feel like this kind of um, snuck under the radar. I don't know if our guys knew. Comerica Park got a little makeover. So they're moving in the fences. Center field's 10 feet in. Woo, still second deepest center field to Colorado. But my favorite part, and I think this should be mandatory in all ballparks, is that the fences have been lowered. Seven right. feet in center and right, which is about a foot and a half difference, okay. But in right center, for example, it's from it's almost chopped in half, and that promotes athleticism and home run robbery. So right. whenever there's a ballpark that has a wall too tall anywhere, Fenway, I get it. But other spots, I'm like, that's just stupid because those are some of the best plays in baseball. So how pumped were you to see yeah. that? Of course, for your team, but also just as a fan of the game. Yeah, no, it'll be fun. And the fence coming in was probably overdue with just how the topic of it. Like, I don't, I think you got to have a, a field that you can build a team for and, it, and you play a certain way. And, you know, it's like old school back on the turf, you would have fast teams or like the small ballparks, you'd have these mashers that could hit the ball out of the ballpark. And we, we're going to be somewhere, it's still going to be a pitcher's park. Like the fence in center was so far that it didn't matter if it was a six foot fence, a three foot fence, a 10 foot fence, like nobody was going to get to 422 or whatever it was in order to rob a home run. And now it's at 412. Now I'm waiting for the first hitter to hit it 410 to dead center field. And it says on the, on the app or whatever, like it would have been a homer in 24 out of 30 parks. And they're going to come in and be, be still be mad that the fence isn't, isn't close enough, but um, it'll be a little bit more of a fair park, especially for our home hitters. I'm just hoping that first home run over that new fence is ours. Like, there's going to be nothing worse than the one that falls in between those fences if it goes against us. But um, it's overdue because the ballpark is it, just such a deflating experience to for our hitters, and the psyche of 81 games matters. And it's still going to be a big enough pitcher. And Matt Boyd summed it up best when we signed him. And he was a previous Tiger, then went away for a year, and then he comes back. He's like, if a dude hits the ball 415 feet to center – it probably should be a home run. That's fair. That's fair. Now, this is this is coming from somebody. You have one more career. I just looked it up. You have one more career home run than me, so you officially nice. have more power and more hair than me. But the question is, I looked at your bio here. Okay, you were a second rounder, a third rounder, and a third rounder. Right. Where, you, where you were drafted. Are you did, – did you meet expectations as a player – more or as a manager more so the way i phrase it as i get older it i just had to play in order to set the stage for me to manage that was a means to an end for me like like i thought at first i was gonna you know you're gonna be the star you're gonna go catch for 10 years you're gonna go make a ton of money and you're gonna ride off into the sunset for the rest of your career um what i found out was that's just a valuable experience to set up this i'm in my 10th year managing 
which I would have never dreamed of doing. I never thought I was going to do it. I actually thought um, I was going to do other things in the game and, and, and I've been able to do this a few times. So um, I've always considered uh, my career as underachieving on the field. And I've been super proud, except for the, the, the issue in Houston with my manager career and how I've been able to impact players, develop relationships, and ultimately uh, experience a ton of stuff on the field. So um, obviously I'm, I want to I want to manage as long as somebody wants me to be in the dugout and and be pulling the strings a little bit. But I uh, I think the, 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 the playing career, I was super frustrated at the end of my playing career that I wasn't a better player. I I'll talk about my homer off Clemens or Sabathia and some of the big names that will that'll be the highlights of my career. But um, but yeah, that's kind of how I see it. I like it. I like it. So, AJ, are you more of an offensive or a defensive fan as a manager? Um, probably defensive. I mean, the okay. pitching side of it, I'm dialed in on because I mean, I'm super hard on our catchers because you know it's a position I'm the most comfortable with, and I think we can control the game on with by what pitch we call the pitch shapes, how I sequence, how I make our pitches better, the kind of the field general. I mean, it's just managing is just an extension of, of what we did behind the plate for all of our careers. So well, well then, I'm, no, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm only cutting you off for one reason. Go back to the original Comerica Park. You'll love the defense. Get a fast center <laughs> fielder. It was gigantic. There were the, where the fences were last year. There was like another twenty feet. There was a flagpole in center field. I know. The bullpen was in right. It was like twenty feet deeper. We when we first opened it, we had Tory Hunter in center. We're like Tory, just go catch everything. We're gonna <laughs> no hit doubt. it to center, and he would just go catch. Like go back to that when Juan Gonzalez complained about like it's, I'm not signing there. It's too big. Well, right. Go back to that. Let's see some pitching and defense. Yeah, but but most of the time in the big leagues, when you hit a ball in the gap, it doesn't stop rolling before it gets to the fence. Like that was the problem. <laughs> it was like little league when they didn't have a fence and the ball would just stop rolling, and then all of a sudden they'd pick it up and throw it in. So there's probably a happy medium. Hopefully we found it. But I um, I'm with you. Like the big park doesn't doesn't bother me it, it, near as much. But as a player, that front row homer, which was empty in my tank to the pull side was was pretty was pretty frustrating over the old fence. And now they're complaining about a fence that was 10 feet in. Now it's coming another 10 feet in. So it uh, times are changing. AJ, I have one more. Um, so we had Correa on like a week and a half ago and went over all the ankle doctor stuff. And I was, you know, and we're like, are you pissed at him? I'm like, are you pissed at the ankle doctor? Because he was supposed to be in San Francisco or New York, and now he's back in your division, and you guys are going to have to <laughs> Man, deal with him for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I should have a problem with this doctor. I'm like, I would have signed <laughs> off on an for him to go west. Like, I was fine with him either coach. Uh, I'm happy for him. I such a good relationship with him. And, and and I was texting with him the other day. We went down to Minnesota, and, and he played. And, um, you know, those things are really hard to deal with. And I see it now from a completely different angle because of the, the managing player relationship. But I um, – all these guys, I mean, I, I kind of hope they all sign with, with the West Coast teams or the East Coast teams and stay out of the Central, um, especially if I have a long history. Springer did his part. He went and signed in Toronto. Altuve can stay in Houston his whole career, hopefully. JV did a nice job. Like, these guys that I've managed, um, I'll be fine if those guys stay on the coast and, and stay out of our division. Yes, amen. Well, good luck. Um, enjoy the rest of spring training. Thanks for coming on. Kratzy's a broadcasting star now. As you can yep. see, doing a live show every day. So I'm sure he'll bug you again at some point. Yeah, no, anytime. And you guys come uh, come hang with me whenever you can. Yes. No, dude, I, hey, I live in Orlando. I try to stay out of Lakeland. You know that. <laughs> you know that. Now, Lakeland is a no, no There's go. There's too many good restaurants for AJ at Lakeland. He's like, hey, I'm, I'm on a diet. I got to avoid it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Central Florida can't beat it. Appreciate it, AJ. Have a good one, All man. Right. See you later.